Good morning everyone and welcome to part 5 now in it I think of this video. So we're pretty much sanded down bar a couple of little bits here and there. While sanding down I found a lot more repairs and most of them just spider cracks but I've gone this far I might as well do it properly. If I do leave the spider cracks my mate said that they'll just come through anyway. Um, so. We spent the whole day yesterday together, um, filling and, and everything else, so I'll show you the gist of it. So, these ones that I filled before, we've just refilled, simply because they've got holes and things in them, but it just makes it a nicer finish. Um, there, we built that one up a bit, because that got sanded down a bit much by Duncan. Um, there, there. A repair there. A big one there. This, all needs, this is a proper gel filler. Um, so it's rock hard. Around the windows and things. All just the little scuffs and bits we're struggling on. Um, that'll make the boat completely, hopefully, perfect. <coughs> um, we done it yesterday and where the weather, there was a big one there. I'll show you on the photos. But where the weather is so cold, it just wouldn't go off. And it's still a little bit tacky today, even after standing with the heat gun. So the morning's job, and the first part of this video, is I'm literally gonna walk around with a heat gun, a fag, and a cup of coffee, and heat all of these up. And then we are on to the last couple of bits of sanding, which I probably won't film because you're probably all sick of seeing sanding. And then we are into filler primer. So, hopefully, this boat will be getting somewhere very shortly. And, um, yeah, I've noticed a lot of you commenting and, and asking questions and things, which is great. Please do. Um, I'm no expert whatsoever, but my best mate is, so I'm sure I can um, I can get his advice. Um, yeah, and I think my biggest fan, <laughs> James Fuller. Shout out to you, James Fuller. Um, you'll have to show me what you're doing with your boat as well, mate. And yeah. Anyway, cheers for the comments and uh, being so interested. get the gist. Quite therapeutic, but it gets boring after a little while. All ice, there's some solid ice that's on there. See all the ice drops? 
No, it's good fun. Morning, everyone. So, uh, struggling to find the motivation at the moment with all this bloody lockdown malarkey, and it's hard going, isn't it, guys? Anyway, um, well, for us to have to isolate, a lot of people don't have to, so it's kind of still crap, but not much different for them. Um, apart from, you know, you can't see your families and all that, but a lot of people do anyway. Anyway, it's not what this video is about. We are out here today, um, of going to start sanding down these repairs, um, and get her ready for, let me show you. So obviously we've got repairs everywhere on this boat now, um, I need to sand down. Started this one, most of it's being done by hand with a block of wood, but you're still getting, even just trying to go flat, it's difficult, the boat's so wavy, it's difficult to um, to get it right, but we're just going to have to keep going. And Yeah, so not much motivation as you can probably tell, but I'm just going to blast on and get some done. I won't be doing much filming of the sanding because we've done four parts of that. We want to start seeing some paint go on, so I'll see you when we're further along. So people, it's another day, and instead of getting on and sanding and stuff, I think I need to uh, clean my area up. <laughs> because, um, as you can see, it's a bloody mess. So I'm thinking, the boat's constantly wet. I can't get out here when I want to because it's constantly raining. The floor's a horrible boggy puddle where I'm walking on wet mud all the time. So I'm thinking of trying to shelter her up again. I've got the half broken gazebo. And my mates give me a massive tarp. I've got a load of rope. So I'm just going to makeshift something up. Um, my best mates gone to Barcelona to fix some super yachts and stuff like they do. So we're on our own for the next month or two so I'm hoping he's taught me enough and showed me enough because I've still got a bit of fiberglass into doing stuff so yeah it should be eventful so that's kind of what it consists of I've pinned that down I've never got a chance to clean the garden up it's been storming its ass off around here so I've literally gone up and over it over there as well over there and over the other side so that is pinned down from the outside um, yeah, so I've just chucked that tarp over just to try and keep it dry, but I've actually, where I haven't been out there, it's actually made myself a decent swimming pool in there, so I can have a little paddle in there later if I want. <laughs> but need to get some boat done. It's taking too long now, and my goal is to have it all done, painted ready for water by summer, and I've still got a lot of work to get through. So I'm gonna have to pull my finger out and start and start hammering for it, or it's never gonna get done. So I'm just gonna have a cup of coffee and ponder around and stay of it in there. But it keeps it dry, and um, and have a go at doing it. So I've, all of these are sort of prepped and done, except that one. So I've got to do that one by hand. Um, the rest of them are done. That massive one on the sides come out pretty well. I'll stick a little bit of filler in there because there's a bit of a hole. Um, there's a couple down there that I missed. Well, there's one down there that I missed, but I'll get on that and do that. And then we'll work our way around the boat at the other side, and then I've got a big repair to do right across this window here and onto this part of the body, so kind of like this. And I've got to do that by myself. So let's hope I've uh, paid attention. So people, it's pouring down. It's mank, boggy puddle, but we've worked through. Uh, right, let's walk around it. So all of these are prepped and nice and flat and ready for any little bits of filler before I paint. Uh, I'll move this out of the way for you and show you this. Got pads everywhere, but this is the last lot I've got, and they're all stuck together. Look, right. Anyway, okay. So there's another one. They don't look pretty, but they're beautifully smooth and hard. 
which is what we need. Oh, I missed one there. I'll hit that in a minute. We've done that one that needed to repair. Uh, that massive one on the front managed to get down pretty nicely. Trying to walk around about slipping up, peeps. Uh, we've got this one I've done. This one. Another large one there. Which is awkward because where the boat kind of goes up like that and then down like that, kind of had to sand one side and then the other and then sort of like over the top. But hey, it's boring stuff, but it's what you do. That nasty one there has been sanded pretty nicely. That one, that one, that one, that one. Big one there that Duncan did. There, there, there. There, <laughs> all of them, all of that, right down to the back there. Oh, and there's one there I've missed, two there. See, it's a good job I walked around or I'd have missed them, so back to sanding. So, we have had all them repairs done, sanded down. There's a few more here and there. Um, some of them are really small, I'm just gonna grind back a little bit and add some gel in there and some filler. Um, but there is a significant one along the front window that I'm a bit concerned about because obviously there's a point where I might have to stand on the front of the boat or along along the sides or whatever. I'll um I'll show you look at the state of my nose, all that hair up there. Disgusting. Sorry about that peeps. So yeah, I mean there's quite a few bits I'm not gonna bother about because they're tiny, but I might have to walk along, you know, here. For whatever reason and all on the front here so uh, along the front you can probably see it straight away there's one there and that crack it runs all the way along to the other side and uh, I don't know how I missed it in the first place It runs right the way along, see that? So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fiberglass this bit, the whole lot. Um, I'm hoping that I've learnt enough, like I said. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pretty much try and step by step this. So if anyone else is doing the same jobs and they're not quite sure on how to do it, um, hopefully I can show you the basis of what to do. I'm no expert by any means, this is a learning curve for me as well. I'm a car mechanic, I'm not into boats, although I've been around my mate who's on boats all of his life. And I have owned a boat a very, very long time ago. But yeah, let's, uh, let's get it ground back. So basically people, I have uh, masked up the part that I'm gonna grind down to give you and me a reference. Now you can see where the crack is in the centre here. You're supposed to give a good area. That may even be a bit small. I might go a bit more maybe to this side of the tape. Um, but you're supposed to give a good area, you know, an inch to two inch each side of the crack. And we're going to grind this back off the gel, because this is gel coat, into fibreglass, um, which you'll see as we dig in. Um, there, there for example, that's glass. So we're gonna dig in quite deep to be able to um, lay our fiberglass in there and it's still not quite come up to level so then we've got enough to fill and shape. So yeah, that's basically the gist of it and I will, um, and I will show you what it looks like once it's grind down or I might even film that bit for you. So, good morning peeps, it is freezing, it says on my phone that it, with the wind it feels like minus 8, it is snowing slightly, anyway, I'm not going to be out here all day because it's too cold and I'm shivering already, but I said I'd walk you through this part of the job and I'm going to try to do so, so. 
I'm trying to take away as less as possible. It may just be easier to just grind this whole piece down, this whole piece down and lay one piece right across. But I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to leave it the way it is. I think that looks pretty good. Um, so, if you're good with a grinder and you're confident that you can do it without completely ruining it with an angle grinder, it's a lot quicker and it's a lot easier. But if not, you can just use a sander. You know, edge the sander and get in there and do it, but it will just take a bit longer. But for you guys who are a bit worried or you know because once you go right through it's a big job to have to rebuild from nothing so i'm going to use the grinder because i'm pretty confident with it and this is what it looks like before and i'll show you what it's done after and a bit of an obvious point that i didn't say obviously depends on your grinder as well don't go on there with a big thick grinding disc or a cutting disc get yourself a flappy disc one of these or a little sanding pad um, if not, and you haven't got those and you don't want to, like I say, a sander will do the job. Uh, 60 grit or a 40 grit would be better. But you could do it with anything as long as it's on there. It just takes longer. But I'm going to go at it with this because I've been using great angle grinders all my life. So, And that's it done. So as you can see what I've done, let me get up close to it. So the idea is this is the gel, so obviously if you had your paint on top for someone who's starting again, that's why I sanded the whole boat first to prep it for paint so I could see all the damages and things that I needed to do before, you know, I, otherwise I'd just be repairing one, think, oh lovely, that's done, repairing another, lovely, that's done, and then finding 20 more. So as you can see, the whole boat is covered in repairs, so don't be disheartened if you find loads because you're going to. But I'm, like I say, I'm very fortunate because my best mate is a boat builder and does all of this sort of thing for me and helps me and tells me what I need. Obviously, you guys might not have that. So uh, feel free to ask any questions on my videos or message me on my Facebook or anything like that. And anything I can do to help you out, I certainly will. Um, anyway, back to what we were doing. So you'd, you'd go down to your gel coat, which is what you want because it's lovely and smooth. And then you dig from your gel, gel coat. That's probably maybe three mil before it goes down. You can't really see it on the camera, but it does slope into the glass. And there's a hole there. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But you go into your glass like this. It doesn't matter if it's really wavy and bumpy. Obviously you want to try and get it as level as you can, but I decided to try and make it a bit more level. Look, and you end up really thin. So don't, don't be fooled and think that, you know, you've got loads and loads to go because otherwise you're repairing holes and then it's it's a bit more but the idea is to dig back a bit so when we lay on our fiberglass it comes nearly level to your gel again and then obviously you can fill on top of that so you can overfill slightly so you can sand your shape back in so by the time it's done no one will know like this one now this one sits uh, slightly like a triangle because it's the front of the boat see so it slightly goes up there and up like there so if you were to sand flat on that one it would just take you straight back to the gel you have to kind of go that side and that side and that side until you get a nice even bit um, I don't have to tell you all how to shape and sand I'm sure you can do that yourself but it is all in the prep work the amount of prep you do and repairs you do and everything else is where your boat's gonna last it's gonna end up like a car you know you do a good paint job it lasts and it looks good for many years it's the same with this I could rush it and I could just blast some paint on it and it looked great for a few years but then I'd be doing all this again so in a couple of days I'm freezing by the way I don't know if you can hear in my voice but a couple of days and the weather is supposed to get a lot nicer so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna prep it for now and then in um, in a couple of days when the weather's warmer, we're going to fiberglass it. And then this will probably be the end of this video because as much as I wanted to get into the paint, I didn't expect all of this. It's a learning curve for all of us guys. So after this, 
this repair and maybe a, you know probably a couple more if I find them it's gonna be full on getting it painted getting the primer and the filler on there because once it's it's like whitewashing a wall in your house once you've chucked the filler on there chucked the uh, primer on there it's gonna show up any any bad bits it's going to show up any bits you've missed any holes anything like that and that's when you can sort it out before final paint yeah so enough nattering she is really coming along we are getting there it's a slow process it's a marathon not a race but by summer we should have some great exploration videos and getting back to doing what i want to do but We've got to follow it, peeps. We've got to do these guidelines and everything everyone says. It sucks, I understand. Most of us don't, because I certainly don't want to either. But we do have to. Solid ice. So, yeah. I'll be coming back to you in a couple of days with... There's some gel. I have some fiberglassing up there that's nice and raw that hasn't been fiberglass uh, thingy back. Yeah, so I'll be getting back to you in a couple of days and we'll be fiberglassing this bad boy and filling it. And then we can uh, sand it down and move on. And hopefully it helps a couple of you people out there who are thinking, God, I've got some repairs to do and I ain't got a clue how to do them. And hopefully this helps you out a bit. So it finally happened. It was a lot better than this earlier. So at 7 o'clock this morning, me and the kids were out here having a snow fight. Um... Glad I covered her up now. So the reason I'm putting this little clip in before I get on with doing all the fiberglassing like I said I was going to do is I just want to tell everyone when you when you get your boat sanded down have a bloody good look over it because I've gone round this book this boat probably 10 times and I still keep finding the odd little crack and little bit of damage here and there that I never saw before. So what I'd advise you do is make sure once you're fully sanded is clean your boat down and wet it with a hose or something like that and then walk around it and have a really good look. Um, we've got this one that i am decided I'm going to do. It's not too bad but I've gone this far and done all these repairs. One more ain't going to hurt is it? So yeah we're going to grind that one down and we're going to fiberglass this one as well at the same time as doing this one. Yeah, that's it basically. Let's get on with fiberglassing. There's another bit dug out, ready to go. And where I did this massive repair here, it got very thin, so I've dug out the inside so we can do that again. And I got a nice little war wound. Yeah. If you're squeamish, it's only a little one. But it's a good one. <laughs> Joys of working with power tools. That literally was just the tiny, tiniest touch on your finger, so you've got to be really careful. Could should put a guard on it, which I have got. It's just you can't twist it and bend it the way you want to. Got some nice uh, little holes in that in here. And this is very thin also. So it's going to take a good bit of repairing, but this is why it's worth doing it. So people, today is the day we get the fiberglassing done. So I'm just going to go through a little list of what I've got. Um, some acetone, just make sure it's all nice and clean, some resins in there, nice clean bucket to mix it up in, heat gun to make sure everything's dry, nice mixing stick, fluffy roller, a couple of paint brushes just in case you need to get in some bits you can't get the roller into, I've got some winter grade catalyst which means it just goes off a lot quicker because of the cold, I've got a bag, with a load of fiberglass inside and that. I've got a bag with some fiberglass inside. I've got my roller, I've got a consolidating roller, a load of rag. Oh, sorry, dropped it. A load of rag and a decent pair of gloves. A nice work table, workspace to lay it all out on. So let's get started. Another thing I've forgot to mention is you need a really decent pair of scissors. And I've just literally got an old bit of cardboard, look, and I'm just cutting myself a template out of roughly where I want it to be. And then I can put this against the fiberglass and cut the shape straight out. So, although I know it's dry, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to run over it with the heat gun just for a couple of minutes. 
to make sure that there's no moisture in there from obviously it's been very cold the last couple of days so there could be a lot of ice or whatever you know and you don't want any water in there at all or dirt so we're going to go with this and then we're going to wet a rag up there with a good bit of acetone and we're going to clean it up so we're going to have a good glug of this over the whole rag real nice and wet Make sure you've got gloves, guys, because you're going to want a lot of them. Take them on and off, preferably the latex gloves. But if you ain't got those, the other ones I showed you are all right. You know, as long as they're rubber or even marigolds, you could wash them off and reuse them, you know. A bit of acetone afterwards. It's going to give all that area a really good clean. Make sure there's nothing in there just turning the rag over now and again making sure we're just not rubbing dirt back into it you know right so that's nice and clean so I've got my pieces all cut out ready and I'm going to get the resin and the catalyst now. Catalyst, mixing stick, resin. On the table. Clean bucket and a roller. The roller's at the ready. Clean buckets and rollers. Now... I'm not going to try and tell you I know what I'm doing here because I don't. Um, so if you're not, if you don't want to follow this video in a sense of adding your catalyst, then um, you can work it out yourself. But basically, whatever you put in, you need two percent of this to whatever's in there. I haven't measured it out or anything. I'm guesstimating. So um, you guys, if you do it yourself, it's your same. It's your own peril, the same as mine. My mate would be here and he knows exactly what to do and how much to put in just by eye. But he's busy in Barcelona at the moment working, so I'm just going to guess it and go for it myself. So I've added it in there. Now what you want to do is get in there and give it a really, really good mix. And then start working fast. Because if I have put far too much in, it's going to start going off really quickly. And if I haven't, then we'll be with a heat gun for a long time. But it changes colour as well when you add the catalyst. What, and I've literally watched my mate do this maybe four or five times so I'm I haven't watched any YouTube videos or anything I'm just copying what's in my memory so if I do anything wrong well it's me boat my boat in it so it don't really matter and I've got him to sort it out when he's back but I'm just trying to help out a bit in the sense of some of you might not have a clue like I didn't and this may help you so I'm just going to put the camera down make sure I give this a good whisk so now on a nice clean surface you want to wet up your roller and slap a load on the table that you're going to be working with. I've got quite large pieces, so... We're going to lie our piece on there and roller it, but I'm going to have to... Uh... It's quite difficult to try and hold this camera. And do it because once you start doing it it breaks down really quickly and is difficult to maneuver I'm just gonna soak it right up with all this resin make sure it's nice and wet all the way through now the tricky bit is to try and pick it up so bear with me right so I've picked that up um, now I'm going to do the second piece, I've placed that on there, guys I'm trying to work quick because it goes off quick and I don't want to get resin all over my phone. So as you can see I've just placed the cut bit that I've done on there and now I'll do the same with the other bit and then we'll move on from there in a minute. Right so now it's all laid on, I've got a clean pair of gloves on, I've already done this one. So what you want to do is get your roller with a bit of resin on it and just gently shape what you want you know just stretch it all out
Don't worry about like overhang and mess and resin. It's all easy to sand off once it's done. The main part is to get your piece that you're you're getting in all all nice and in place the way you want it. It breaks down really fast and it isn't easy to work with. So I apologise I couldn't film the actual candle in it, but don't have anyone to film for me and. I've got obviously got my phone in my hand. So this is the important part. You must have one of these, a consolidating roller. And then you can literally, this will get all your air out. Sorry, video must have switched off. I'm trying to do this, but consolidating roller is what I was saying, and it's to get the air out. So you go over all of it. I've done that one, um, and I'm just doing this one. But you literally just go over like this. It breaks it down, gets the air out, and you know, stretches it all down. Don't know how much these are. I'll get them all given to me and stuff because I'm lucky, lot, my friend. Yeah, I've just done a whole video bit and it must have switched off, and I'm not messing around because I've got to work quick. So you get the gists. You roll a bit of your resin onto it, get it shaped out with your fluffy roller, and then you get your consolidating roller, which is what I'm using now and you just get it right in there, you know, and get the air out. Just make sure there's no air bubbles, no gaps or anything, and it's all nice and stretched out, yeah? So I've also got this one inside from where it went really thin outside. This was the really big repair that we did. And I've got this and I'm staggering it out to make it stronger so we've got a smaller piece, bigger, and then a piece of that actual size. So we're going to put some resin on it and get those bits on. Right guys, so I hope that all kind of went into the clip okay. I won't know till I edit it. Um, but basically, let's run through the steps quickly before I do the final step. This is a part I actually missed, but it, you're supposed to do it, but it should be okay because I've wet it enough. But once you've cleaned your area, put the resin on your area first, then your table and your and your fiberglass, then onto there. Once it's on and it's out, you've seen me with a fluffy roller going over it, then the consolidating roller. And we've done that on both of these, and we've got them in the position we want, and we think we haven't got any bubbles, okay? So, while I was waiting, the resin still hadn't gone off. So I decided to tackle these ones, which was a bit of a scramble because I had to cut three staggered pieces. You start off with a smaller square, then a bit bigger, and then to the actual size of the repair. So it was a bit of a struggle, but that's the gist of it. Um, now, when you finish going over with your consolidating roller, you're then supposed to take your fluffy roller and just go over again like one last time and just sort of check it make sure before it goes off that you're happy with it and it just after the consolidating roller this just fluffs it out because with the consolidating roller it picks up like little hairlines if you like and leaves them poking out so let me uh, try and jump off this boat without killing anyone two seconds Oh, right. So we've got our roller. And I'm just going to go over it again with the fluffy. And then we are done. And we are just going to get the heat gun on there. Um, you don't want to cook it. You just want to put some heat into it because it's so cold just to get it going off. You alright, Sarah? Yeah, I uh, made some cupcakes. Sarah's made cupcakes, YouTube. It's to bribe you to let me go down the shop and make shortbread chocolate cookies. When have I ever needed bribing to make shortbread cookies? Well, I need your wallet and your mask. Oh. That's the point, you need my wallet. Oh, here's my cupcake that I made. Okay, um... I can't put it down. Put it over on the sofa or on the bin, on top of the big board I've got on the bin. Sarah brought me out, my daughter, brought me out some uh, cupcake. 
I think it's in my coat pocket, love. See, me personally, I wouldn't have liked to have gone over this again with a roller. I felt like I had it perfect. And now, you know, like when you're filling a wall and you think, oh, that's lovely, just one little last scrape, and then, oh, no, I have to start again. <laughs> it's like that. But that's the gist of it. That is how we fiberglass. I hope that's helped some people. I hope that it's uh, come out okay. Who knows? It's my very first time, so we'll see. But I think it looks okay. So now we are literally just going to sit here with the heat gun for a little while, making sure we don't go too close because we don't want to cook it. We just want to put some heat into it for it to go nice and hard. I'm starting on this one because this was the, the biggest, thickest one, the most resin. My little girl made me a cupcake in exchange for robbing my wallet. Let's see how good this cupcake is, eh? It was a good cupcake. <laughs> and it's still wet, but it's going off. A bit more heat. The old heat gum. And it should be solid. Okay, so... Tiny, tiny bit tacky, but... It's nice and uh, hard now. It's gone off. That winter grade stuff where it's quite well, especially where it's cold. Pump the heat gun in. I could go another 10 minutes or so and it'd probably be rock hard, but there's no need. So, we're going to go through everything quickly because this is the end of this video and I'm hoping to bloody move on from all of this. I'm going to talk you through what's going to happen and then on the next video you will see some more progress. So, we find, say we find a glass break where there's cracks and everything that we want, you know, we want to do, like you've seen in the video. We find it, we grind it down like we did with this, a good inch or two inches away from where the actual, even more than that if you have to, from where the crack is and where it ends. Then once we've done that, we grind it down, we make sure the area is super duper clean, you know, with nothing there. Then we roll out. Uh, sorry, then we can make a template. You can either do that with your measurements or putting your fiberglass against it and just cutting a shape or doing what I did and just grabbing an old bit of cardboard out of the recycling bin and making a template. Then you will mix up your resin. Make sure you've got all your materials to hand because it all goes off very quickly and it all happens very quickly and it can be really hard work. So you get your table, your nice clean surface, everything ready. You roll out your mat, your resin onto the table, cut your templates first, sorry, cut your templates first, roll out the resin onto the table, slap your fiberglass on top, make sure it's nice and soaking and covered in your resin, then you pick your piece up and you'll put it in there. Once it's in there, you'll go over it with your little fluffy bit of roller just to shape it out while you do all the other pieces then come round with your consolidating roller and get all the air bubbles out stretch it out make sure it's nice and breaking up you'll see it as you're doing it it'll sort of go from fiberglass to like one piece if you like um and then you've done that and then you'll do that on all of them and then you go over the top again with your little fluffy roller a little bit of resin that's already on it just to get off all the bits because as you go over it with your consolidating roller it picks up like little pieces like this and leaves them sticking up you want to get them nice and flat and get it all in once that's done you can either leave it you have to make sure it stays dry you can either leave it or just blast over with the heat gun for five ten minutes you know not at a good distance so you're not cooking it because otherwise you'll put air bubbles in it again um blast over it just to get it turning off like that's not completely gone but it's it's tacky which means it's going and then just leave it it'll go nice and solid once that's done, you'll see what you have to do to shape it. You'll go over with your sander. You're better, really, if you can, to get a nice big flat block of wood and go over it just a little bit to scuff it all up. Um, obviously, if you've got any really raised bits, get that down a little bit. But don't take too much of the fiberglass away because, remember, that's what we're doing to repair it. We're putting that strength back into it and giving it that extra bit of body. Then we want to get out your filler which you can use car body filler, I've been told. But again, I'm lucky, I've got some proper filler made up by my mate. 
um, with Joe in it and everything else, so it's really hard stuff, and it's four boats. But you can, if you haven't got any of that or any means, you can get some car body filler and the little pink stuff, mix that with it. Get yourself a nice scraper, you know, a spreader, a little plastic one and a, a big one that you use for, you know, plaster issues and all that, but not super sized one unless you've got a real super sized bit to do. And then if you're not great with filling and sanding, just overfill it. Just make sure you, you know, give it a good few mil over what you actually want and then just slowly work it in and it, until it matches your body and it matches wherever else you're going these boats are old and they've been sanded and polished lots of times and it doesn't matter how much you try you're never going to get them completely flat all the way down and round you look down the boat like that and you'll see it it's all over the place but it is what it is that's why you build up your paint coats and you just get it the best you can but it'll look really good when it's done Morning. Anyway, enough of the nattering. This video is complete. I will um, I will get it out and posted, and I'll get working on the next one. So what I was going to run you through on the next one simply is all of this inside will be sanded properly because Duncan did okay, but it's not done. There's still loads lying around. That will be sanded properly. These will be sanded flat, and the same. All of this will be sanded properly, blasted over again floor will be done flat then we'll be repairing the floor but we'll probably be on to the paint so by the time we come into this next video you're probably going to see us putting on lots and lots of filler primer so i hope you've enjoyed this part and i hope i've helped a few of you out um so you know some people's been asking me questions and are a bit stuck with it i'm no expert but my mate is like i keep saying so i like a go i hope you enjoyed this uh this video and um yeah Look forward to uh, seeing some paint on her. Let's get on to the next part, guys.